The digital revolution is already in full swing here in the fields of northern Germany. A thermometer transmits data from the asparagus crop. It's sending out signals from in here. It's the first smartphone assisted harvest that asparagus farmer Heiner Bartels has ever done. I hope to get an idea of when we can actually start harvesting. What makes the optimal cow for modern dairy farming? That's what breeder consultant Johanna Schendel wants to find out. By seeking out super sperm that can optimize the udders for modern milking machines. But how does it work? What we are doing here has nothing to do with traditional nature, which many people might like to imagine. Corn has a new enemy. It's small, but not to be underestimated. It can destroy entire crops. Could a drone help to keep it at bay? Bernd Meyer hopes so. Shiver. digital technology outperform nature? It's late spring and an experiment is about to begin. Bernd Meyer is an amateur drone pilot and he works for a cooperative of seed breeders that's carrying out a test. He's also a specialist in digitalized crop cultivation. Farmer Bernd Meiner hired him. He wants to stop a pest known as the corn borer from destroying his crops. The corn borer has migrated to northern Germany because of climate change. Its larvae eat into the stalks, which makes them bend and they can no longer be harvested. Miner worries he'll lose up to 30% of his harvest. He wants to eradicate the corn borer without chemicals. We need a way to fight it off. And I'm sure that at some point, politicians will ban chemical methods of killing the corn borer, like they have with many other things, whether it makes sense or not. So we should try something new. Bernd Meyer plans to fly a drone over his fields. Easier said than done. The problem is those turbines over there, because I'm flying through a gap of 10 meters and the system isn't so accurate that I can get right in the middle with 5 meters on each side. This is pest control 4.0, never before attempted here in northern Germany. The next step is programming the flight route. Here I can mark out where the field is. It's a flight map for the drone. So I mark it and then lay the flight map on top. So far, Miner has been trying to fight off the pest on foot. Now they're attempting to attack it from the air. The drone will scatter a biological pesticide without chemicals. Everything can be programmed precisely, like the flight duration, direction, speed and the altitude of the drone. He's nervous. The experiment could still fail. This is completely new territory for me. And Bernd Meyer will come to fly twice at intervals of 10 or 14 days. If we have an easterly wind one time and a westerly wind the other, I have no idea what's going to happen. It requires a lot of trust. And this whole thing isn't cheap. <laughs> the farmer is paying the cooperative 16,000 euros. He doesn't get any kind of subsidy. This dairy farm in the state of Mecklenburg-Vorpommern has 500 cows.
breeding consultant Johanna Schendel has just started work. Today is inspection day. Almost straight away, Johanna can identify the cows with poor genetic traits. 35 dairy farms in the region rely on her expertise. To put it very simply, I'm optimising the cow. That's it in a nutshell. So if a cow has knock knees, I need to find her a bull with very parallel legs. So that the cow's daughter also has parallel legs. North German dairy farms compete on the world market. So they need cows that work as efficiently as possible with their milk machines. It's 28-year-old Johanna's job to find them. She works for Rinder Allianz, the largest cattle breeding company in the state of Mecklenburg-Vorpommern. Johanna is looking for deficiencies in the animals to make sure they're not passed on. She checks 50 cows an hour. I start with the udder. The udder has top priority. Then I look at the legs, whether the pelvis is in the correct position, and if the shoulders are broad. Basically, whether she's on the big side or if she's a more slender animal. With the udders, I check that the teeth sit correctly or if they're too close together, too far apart, too short, or whether they're nice and taut. The animals' bodies become statistics of how well they'll fit the machines. I have all the cows listed on my phone, abbreviated by traits like size, milk, character, body depth, strength, pelvic inclination, pelvic spread, angle of hind legs, hoof angle, and so on. Look, they're curious. 274, I don't need you. Who are you? 226, you can come. If the udder isn't shaped correctly, then it won't milk. The milker then has to think about how to attach the equipment. And if it hangs too low, they might not be able to get underneath it. And then, sadly, the cow has to leave, even though she's otherwise healthy. But if you can't milk her, then she has to go. We want to avoid that kind of situation. Go, in this case, means slaughtered. Every cow has a chip that sends data to the herd manager's computer. Milking takes place three times a day, with the cows working in shifts. To keep up with rock-bottom milk prices of 30 cents a litre, the machines have to work at maximum efficiency. A turnstile recognises every cow by its chip. 500 cows follow each other through here, past one single milker. One cow produces 32 litres of milk a day. The system calculates the rotation speed of the rotary milking parlour based on the milk flow and the milk quantity of the previous day. The cows are usually milked out of one rotation, and if not, the system automatically reduces the speed. The computer transmits the milk yield in real time. Herd manager Stefan Gabbert spends more time here than in the barn. It's hard to do this without the technology, because the numbers say much more than anything else. I can work much better with real numbers than just looking into a crystal ball. Stefan's herd management system can help him to predict the perfect cow, though, by ancestry, health and milk composition. Even the cud chewing time and the corresponding feed rations are monitored digitally. Everything is carefully thought through. We've prepared for power cuts. We have backup storage that can keep the computers alive for three hours. But after those three hours, we'd be going back to the old rustic days of farming, just us and the cows. A single milker would have to empty the udders of 500 cows by hand. This is Wennersdorf in the state of Lower Saxony. It's early April and asparagus farmer Heiner Bartels is on his way to the field for the second time today. He could actually observe his field from the comfort of his own home, via smartphone. 
He's looking for my thermometer. He always hides the 400 euro device somewhere different to stop thieves. Wrong direction. It's down there. There it is. Customers are already putting pressure on him. Not possible right now. Yeah, let's do that. Bye. Another customer? Yeah. This is... Restaurants, supermarkets and farms are all waiting for Highness Asparagus. It's actually a very inconspicuous thermometer. It's in here sending out signals. It doesn't make the asparagus grow any faster, but it does give us an indication of when it might come. Oh, there's the damn phone again. I'll call you back. Every hour an app sends him four temperature readings from the asparagus crop. From the crown to the tip. The app uses these readings to calculate the optimal time to start harvesting. The technology makes it quite easy to check and get an overview of what's going on with the crop. I'm hoping to get an indication of when we can actually start. And I'm also hoping to get an overview of the temperature. If it gets too hot and the asparagus starts to get this blossom coming out the top, then we'll turn the sheeting over. A friend recommended it. Nothing here yet. At least, nothing on the surface. The asparagus isn't growing as it should. It's warm enough. My glasses have steamed up. I'll dig around in a few spots and see if I can see anything. I can feel that the ground is nice and warm. It's coming. Here it is. But it's missing something. It's still 10 centimeters from the surface. And that's about four or five days. There's been too much rain in recent weeks. The sun just came back out today. The app was right that there's nothing there yet. But I thought it was worth looking anyway. I was getting nervous. Over the next 10 weeks, Heiner needs to make enough turnover to keep his farm going throughout the year. St. John's Day marks the end of the season for us. It's June 24th. Anything we get after that, any way we can make money, is a gift. When people want produce and you can't meet the demand, that's very unfortunate for a farmer. Could an app now help boost his yield? Nothing I can do. In another field, the asparagus needs to be planted for next year. But the machine can't get deep enough. The ground's too hard and stony. Asparagus crowns should go 20 centimetres deep into the ground. These ones have to come out, and they also want to lay a heating hose to go under the plants. It's not easy. The plants need to be in the right position, and the hose needs to be in the right position underneath them. If they don't work together, we have a problem, and we spend the next eight years trying to fix it. The plant stays in the soil for eight or maybe even ten years, so it's better to try and fix the problem rather than getting angry about it for ten years. You can get worked up about it, but that doesn't get you anywhere. You just get on with it. I just want to go over and make sure I can get the machine going. Damn, it's bad here too because of the stones. Heiner hired the tractor and driver for 75 euros an hour. Planter Jens Hummer has a tight schedule. The next farm is already waiting. Heiner sends what's known as a grubber out onto the field. It's supposed to loosen the soil. Perfect. Yeah, it's completely different, isn't it? Ah, uh, my ruler. 
Ja. Yes. Perfekt. Ja, perfekt. Alles klar. Great. It worked. Funktioniert. The high-tech tractor drives across the field independently at 0.2 km an hour. Four satellites keep it on the right track via cell phone reception with a real-time positioning program accurate to 2 cm. It's a really convenient working because no one can drive as precisely as this system, accurate almost to the centimeter, for hours on end. The GPS tracker costs 200,000 euros. They've had to plant the asparagus late this year. They plant eight asparagus crowns per metre. That's the only way the field makes a profit. The heating hoses are also laid down in the soil. Heat from Heiner's own biogas plant should help his future asparagus to grow no matter the weather. When we started growing asparagus, my parents used to lay down tape and every 30 centimeters there was a clothes peg where an asparagus plant had to go. That's how we started. And so I think we made a lot of progress to the way we are now. Pest control has also come a long way. In southern Lower Saxony, near Einbeck, a biological pesticide has been developed to fight off the corn borer. This is where Bernd Meyer's experiment begins. He'll put the substance into the drone and scatter it onto the fields. Flying drones used to be a hobby, now it's his job. So here it is. You can put nearly 500 balls in it. It's completely new to me. I've never done this before. I just used to take photos and make films. Now the drone has to drop something. I have to know exactly when I'm allowed to do it, and that's what I don't know. I'm hoping to learn something here. We'll see. I'm excited. This is where the anti-corn borer remedy is produced. It's designed to eradicate the newly arrived pest without chemicals. We're not allowed to show how the product is made because it's patented. The family-run business uses an old natural remedy, the Ichneumon wasp, enemy of the corn borer. It's less than half a millimetre long. Here's a housefly for comparison. The Ichneumon wasp lays its eggs in the eggs of the corn borer and destroys its offspring. To create the pesticide, the Ichneumon wasps are packed in paper balls and thrown across the cornfield. The wasps crawl then out and go in search of the corn borer's eggs. Bernd is going to learn all about this during a two hour long training session at the company. Things suddenly get very technical. Ich Newman wasps are called trichogramma and laying eggs is called parasitizing. And there's something Bernd Meyer hadn't considered. The corn borer takes four to nine days to develop, meaning you have only that long for the trichogramma to parasitize the egg. A short window. Just four to nine days? It's nothing really, and by this point the trichogramma can't do anything. Wow. I have newly found respect for the whole thing. I'll have to make sure I keep to that time frame. <laughs> A light trap should tell Bernd when the corn borer has arrived. Will he and his drone be able to manage 200 hectares of corn in just four days? Back in Mecklenburg Vorpommern, Johanna is suggesting bulls that her manager Stefan might like to use to breed. You want to use sexed semen again? Yeah. Sexed semen means only female calves. He's quite big enough though, isn't he? He's on the bigger side. Wait, I have another one. 
It's daughter proven and has very good functional characteristics. Mm. And it makes little cows with nice udders. Mm. Sperm selection is not allowed for humans, but here it plays a big role. Stefan chooses sperm from the bulls Bonham and Sinclair, hoping it will make him the perfect dairy cows. I can discuss it with Stefan and show him on the computer what we have in mind. I can try to prepare it with everything I have available. In the end, though, it's nature and what actually comes out. You can never predict 100%. Back in the cornfield, Bernd is checking the wasps. Sometimes you see them flying, but I don't see any now. Bernd has found a neighbouring field with electricity to use for his light trap. Has it attracted any pests? Yes, it's flying here. We've got one corn borer on the screen right on the trap. Because of the hot May, the corn borer is here 10 days earlier than expected. Yes, there's another one. So the corn borer is here. There's another. It's definitely arrived then. We have the pictures here. It matches one to one. That's a female. And she lays the eggs. So Maya has a maximum of nine days left. It's time to scatter the paper balls. A more welcome arrival than the corn borer, asparagus. Albeit ten days later than hoped, Heiner will get the most money from the first spears. He harvests the crops twice a day. The app tells you when the harvest time begins, and it actually worked. I'm thrilled. He's just as thrilled with this piece of machinery, called a Spurger spin in English. When minimum wage was introduced and pay increased, he replaced some of the harvest assistants with these machines. It lifts the covers and transports the spears. One machine costs around 5,000 euros, but Heiner makes that much from two harvests. The machine definitely gives us more oomph. People can pick faster. But for me, it's not about being able to pick faster, but about making the pickers work easier. It means we can do more, and we can save on people. In fact, we have saved on people. There is a robot you can get now that travels across the field in a natural 24-hour cycle. That's interesting. We still got problems with stones, though. Robots don't really like bumping into stones, either. But they could be a solution at some point, when wage costs really get too high. But the manufacturer of the harvest robot has discontinued its development. Too much technology would be required to replace a human being. Heiner's harvester assistants come from Poland. There are two dozen of them. The one who picks the least isn't allowed back again. It's fierce competition. Heiner is constantly trying to reduce his staff costs. Minimum wage meant I had to pay more, so we tried to mechanize more, like in the sorting plant and in the field. We're basically trying to do more with fewer people, and that's where the path is clearly heading. Of course, it'd be nice if you got decent money for decent products, then this whole thing wouldn't be such a headache, but that's something that's not going to change. Because the customer doesn't want to pay more than 12 euros a kilo of asparagus. The sorting machine scans a thousand spheres a minute and sorts them into four quality levels based on length and thickness. That would take two assistants hours. The sorting machine cost Heiner 70,000 euros. This asparagus peeling machine is a new addition to Heiner's operation. 80% of customers want their asparagus peeled nowadays. Heiner's old peeling machine had reached its limits. 
This one cost 98,000 euros, but it saves him five or six people. Breeding consultant Johanna is on her way home. And she's taken her work with her today. Johanna now uses her data to try and meet the demands of the herd manager. The search for the perfect partner continues. In her pairing plan, she checks which bulls match best with which cows. She can rule out inbreeding. She wants to compensate for deficiencies and boost the healthy traits of the animals. It's pure optimization. I'd compare it with farming machines or smartphones. They're constantly being upgraded. No one wants to use farm equipment that's 50 years old. What we're doing with the cows is no different. Only they're natural. We're taking a living being and optimizing it naturally. The flight route is set. I hope it works. Why would it though? Why would it work? The laptop won't send the flight map to the drone. I'll try with the cable. Laptop on the field, wonderful. So that was four. USB, okay. Okay. It works. Very nice. Or not. I'll try a different cable. This must be the fourth one I've used. It normally works really quickly. It's just stopped. I don't have any more USB cables. What should I do now? I can't do anything about it. Now the wind's picking up too. The devices still can't interact with each other. That noise gets really annoying. The corn borer won't wait for burned. I have no idea. The drone has to cover an area the size of 22 football fields today to keep to the schedule. But I can't send it back now. Finally, it's connected, but... <laughs> the screen's off because the computer's dead. <laughs> the first of nine days, already half gone. Will Burned fail his first assignment? The Mecklenburg Lake District is where the company Johanna works for is based here at Number 1 Bullenburg in the town of Voldeg. It's home to 120 of the most valuable bulls for breeding in northern Germany, including Sinclair and Bonham. These are literally cash cows, or at least cash bulls. Their semen is the most important product of Rinder Allianz. The company sells one million portions of sperm a year worldwide. And there he is. Bonham is three and a half years old, worth half a million euros and dangerous. Bulls are unpredictable and can kill. Three times a week, semen collector Tony Heiner takes Bonham to the collection room. The artificial vagina is warm to 42 degrees Celsius. And I'm also filling it with 42 degrees water. That's the ideal temperature to collect semen from an experienced old bull. Bonham has never seen a cow before. His libido comes from a pommel horse that looks like a cow from behind.
Uno. Bonham was trained to be led by his nose, his most sensitive area. He couldn't be controlled with human strength alone. Bonham. The sperm collector gives Bonham's sperm straight to the lab next door. There are 2.7 millilitres of ejaculate. The sperm is tested immediately for density and activity. At least 70% of the sperm must be moving forwards in a targeted manner. The green paths confirm that Bonham's sperm is at 90%, and there are 421 portions of this one ejaculation. On a good day, he can make a thousand. The sperm is thinned down with chicken's egg whites and separated into portions. The sperm ordered by herd manager Stefan is sent to another company, where it's sexed, meaning it's separated into male and female sperm. One portion of Bonham's sperm currently costs 20 euros. Johanna will take 70 portions to Stefan. Bulls can live up to 20 years. They're sexually mature after about a year. Bonham's son, Brosman, will provide the latest, new, improved generation of sperm. For these animals, it's all about how well they can perform. Bonham's genetics are categorised into hereditary traits, like how well his daughters would adapt to the milking machines. Humans are designing animals to fit machinery. The genetic material can be ordered from a catalogue. Back in Lower Saxony, Wernersdorf is slowly waking up. But the Bartels family farm is already in full gear. The asparagus season is the most important time of the year for Heiner. He sells it directly with no middleman. The market stalls on the streets and the supermarket shelves have to be stocked. All before opening time. The family farm is now being run by the fourth generation. Bartel Senior is in charge of supplying restaurants in Hamburg. Heiner has to deliver his product for the same price, regardless of his yield. The less asparagus we harvest, the harder it's going to be to keep harvest costs under control. And if we get bad weather, the product should actually be more expensive. If only we could actually do that. Let's go. Unfortunately, demand for asparagus stays the same come rain or shine. It's just before 7am. Heiner has come to a supermarket in nearby Hitfeld to deliver the first asparagus of the season. He wants to do it in person. Heiner values personal contact with the staff, but there's bad news. The price has been reduced by a euro right there on the spot. I wouldn't have gone lower, but we were under pressure from the neighbour. I wanted to leave it this week. But I'll go along. Maybe we can go back to it next week. Great. Heiner has delivered his first asparagus. The first he's harvested with help from an app. Before Johanna can deliver the order of bull sperm, she has to fill tanks with liquid nitrogen to freeze it. At minus 196 degrees Celsius, it should have an unlimited shelf life. I'm looking for Kinner's number 33. I can't find it. That's 46? What's going on here? Oh, there's 33. 70 portions are going to herd manager Stefan. Johanna handles them as carefully as possible. There are no calves in there, just money. We're not a fertility clinic or anything. There's 
I don't want to think about how expensive it is. I was once transporting three portions of a very rare bull's sperm. One portion cost 120 euros. Just think about that. What if I dropped them? 120 euros times three down the drain. You can't think about it. I've never thought about it before. Whether or not all these little tubes will produce calves, no one knows yet. Not even Johanna can deliver guaranteed success. Not yet, anyway. It's a hundred kilometre drive to the cow shed. Johanna spends most of her working day in the car. Someone once said to me, here comes Johanna again in her sperm mobile. <laughs> People say all kinds of silly things, but I can laugh about it myself. Back at Stefan's farm, inseminator Roland Henock is looking for cows to inseminate. The cow's sensors also capture their movements, so he can tell which ones are rutting. They become very active, which shows they're ready for insemination. Today is the optimal time for cow number 311. Sperm ready, let's go. The inseminator feels through the intestine to see if the uterus is in the correct position. In a certain way, it is a bit like playing God. Playing God in a small, defined area. She's rutting well. We can inseminate her. Not every insemination works. It often takes several attempts, using up several portions of sperm. It's in the correct position. Now I can release it. So that's it. Designing calves to fit machines. Does that ever attract criticism? I personally haven't encountered many critical opinions. The only thing you hear from time to time is that it's a shame for the cows, because they don't get to have any fun with the bulls anymore. That's how it is. We've completely intervened as humans, and we breed animals the way we need them. That's just how it is. Letting a bull inseminate a cow causes stress, and the more stress, the less milk. So even a high-performing cow will never meet a bull. The milk market dictates the lives of these animals. Gene selection is used to increase profit. That's how our agricultural system works. The debate about whether or not these animals still live in a species-appropriate way has only really just begun. Four weeks later, the good news officially arrives. Cow 311 is pregnant. She'll only start being milked industrially once her calf has its own calf. So Johanna will have to wait three years before she sees if her work was a success. She sees no limits to progress. If I stay as pragmatic as I am now, then I think the vision will be to become even more efficient. I think we still have a long way to go. And Bernd Meyer? After a quick trip to the power outlet in the farmer's office, he's having another go at putting the flight route on the drone. Look at that. It's now it's working. Now we want to scatter the little insects. Our little lucky balls. Balls containing the ichneumon wasps, the natural enemy of the corn borer. Now we really can't let it get damaged in any way. That would be utterly catastrophic, especially if there was a mistake you couldn't fix right away.
Aber das wollen wir mal Let's nicht. Let's just hope it doesn't happen. Okay. Off we go. So I'm taking off. His method works. The drone is flying the flight route automatically. What would have taken a person hours, this drone can do in just a few minutes, without chemicals and without damaging the plants. This is fighting nature with nature. It works really well. Bernd has selected the ball to drop and has mounted it on the drone. The balls are falling just as calculated. The Newman wasps should crawl out of the balls in the next few days and stop the corn borer from spreading further. Fantastic. Perfect. Everything's easy in the end. In the future, it's likely that more and more farms will employ specialists like Burned. He's managed to stick to his schedule in the end. In fact, he only needed seven of the nine days. Wonderful. Even farmers are paving the way for digitalization in the workplace. As long as the technology works, the drone is the future. We're probably trying this a year too early, but we'll already know how it's done next year, so that's good. Sadly, neither the corn borer nor the ichneumon wasp won this time. Drought destroyed most of this year's harvest. You can have all the drones, robots and super sperm in the world, but Mother Nature always has the final say. But... For how much longer?